This installation guide is for a Kia Soul. The part installed in this video is a Kurt model number 11419 hitch. You will need the tool seen here to complete this installation. Hey, what's up everyone? The Kia Soul equipped with a trailer hitch can take you to some pretty cool places like camping and trail bike riding. Can also, you can also use it to tow a U-Haul trailer to just about anywhere in North America. So let's go ahead and break this trailer hitch down and get you outdoors. Um, right out of the box, we have a hitch weighing about 32 pounds. And the first thing that you wanna notice here is that it has an inch and a quarter receiver tube. Um, we also have a cross tube here that ha that's welded to some frame brackets. We have the passenger side here and we have the driver's side here. Um, on the passenger side, we are going to have three attachment points two on the side of the frame, one on the bottom of the frame. That's gonna be identical on the driver's side as well. Um, one other thing I wanna point out here is that on this cross tube, it has a bend uh, bracket here that goes over the exhaust. Um, we also wanna point out that this hitch does have safety chain tow loops for anyone that's gonna to be towing a trailer, so. Okay, let's go ahead and get this vehicle prepped and ready to go. Okay, I'm prepping the vehicle for the hitch install. We're gonna need to remove or lower or push away the wheel well liner here. Um, to do that, there's three plastic fasteners, one here, two up above behind the rear passenger tire. We also have three screws on the outer side of the fascia here and wheel well liner. Okay, let's go ahead and get these guys removed. Okay, removing this plastic fastener, we're gonna stick the Phillips screwdriver here. I'm just putting a little pressure on this fastener so that it comes out nice and easy here. All right, now that the center portion of the fastener is out, it should just pull right out. Perfect. The second plastic fastener is going to be up above the rear passenger tire here. Okay, and we're going to use a Phillips again. Okay, now we'll just give it a tug and it should come right out. There we go. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and remove the third plastic fastener right up above the rear passenger side. And I'm going to use a ratchet here with a Phillips head on it, just because there's limited space above the tire here. Okay, so we're struggling a little bit with this fastener above the tire on the passenger side. Um, they can become loose over time, so basically what we're going to do is create a wedge. I used some crimper strippers here and I wedged it right behind the backing of the fastener. Um, and now that should allow the center screw to come right out of it. Okay, we've got that screw loose, so I'm gonna go ahead and lose the ratchet here. Get the center piece out. Uh, backing should just pull right out. There we go. Okay, now that we have the three plastic fasteners out on the passenger side, we're gonna go ahead and get the three screws. I'll be using a ratchet with the Phillips head on it. You can also use a small Phillips screwdriver. But I'll be using the ratchet here. It makes it a little easier. You can see they come out pretty easy. You can kind of almost spin them by hand. Okay, now that we have the screws and plastic fasteners out, it just simply just pull away from the fascia here. And that's all the room that we're gonna need. We'll go ahead and give you a shot of where the wild nuts are on the side of the frame up in this area here. Okay, now that we have that wheel well liner pulled away, we can see that we have an attachment point right above the exhaust here on the passenger side. This is the most forward one, the rear one back here. We also have one more at the bottom of the frame, which is going to be in this area here. Okay, and this process will be identical on the driver's side. Let's go ahead and do that.
Okay, our next step is going to be to lower the exhaust. Um, to do that, we're going to remove the exhaust rod from this rubber exhaust hanger. Um, you can do that simply by putting a screwdriver in here and wedging it out or a pry bar. I'll be using exhaust pliers. Let's go ahead and do that here. Just like that. That's going to drop down a little bit. And it's okay to let the exhaust hang here. Um, it has several other exhaust hangers supporting it more forward towards the front of the vehicle there. So we'll just go ahead and leave it here for now. Okay, we're at the passenger side frame here, right above the exhaust. Um, this is going to be our hitch attachment point on the passenger side. You can see that the weld nut has a lot of corrosion on it. Let's go ahead and clean out those threads. I'm going to be using a battery post cleaner. Um, it's got some bristles on it, so we're just going to put it up inside and It actually looks like it's cleaning out pretty good. We'll go ahead and continue doing that until we can see the threads nice and clean. Looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and put the provided bolt up in there and try to spin it on this weld nut. Okay, now that we have the bolt started in the weld nut, I'm just going to take a 17 millimeter socket and put it up on the bolt here and just hand tight forward and back a few times just so it's cleaning out any of the debris. And we're going to make sure that we're not stripping the bolt or the threads. And if you feel if you feel like it's getting pretty tight and it's not working well, just go ahead and take your uh, battery cleaner, po your battery post cleaner and clean it out again. Okay, we were able to save this weld nut. Looks like it's spinning pretty good up there. We'll run it all the way up and then run it all the way back. Okay, and we'll go ahead and inspect the other five weld nuts to make sure they're not corroded or need any cleaning. Now that we have the weld nuts cleaned out, um, we're going to go ahead and put the hitch into position. And when we do, we're going to need to put these bolts through um, and the washers. We want to make sure that the teeth on the washers are facing upward towards the hitch. That'll give it a nice grip as you're tightening it down there. Okay, let's go ahead and get this hitch put up into position. You can go ahead and use the exhaust for support, support here. It'll handle the weight. Okay, with the hitch in position, we'll go ahead and we'll just get it hand tight and that'll hold up the passenger side while I set the driver's side. Okay, so on, now that we're over on the driver's side, this, the, the weld nut that's on the bottom of the frame is going to be the most difficult one to get to. So I'm going to do that one last. I'll go ahead and start with putting the bolts into the attachment points in the side of the frame. Now that we have the driver's side bolts put into position, we're going to come back over to the passenger side and get the two side frame attachment points here. Okay, we have all of our bolts in place. We're going to go ahead and torque them down with a 17 millimeter socket. Um, the bolts call for 48 foot pounds. We'll using an extension for this bottom bolt here above the exhaust and this torque wrench will give us a click once we've reached 48 foot pounds just like that okay now we're going to go ahead and torque the two bolts on the side of the frame on the passenger side I'll be removing my extension for that they're in a tight spot so it's going to take a little bit of patience a little bit of time, make sure that you're on the bolt here. Make sure that you get them torqued. Okay, that's the last one on the driver's side. 
Um, before, before we put it all back together, I do want to talk about the lower attachment point here on the bottom of the frame. The manufacturer of the hitch designed this hitch to where it's nearly impossible to get a torque wrench or on the bolt. So basically, we I just took a box wrench and tightened it to what I thought was going to be about 48 foot pounds. With that said, let's go ahead and just put everything back together. I'll start with the exhaust. Okay, so we're just going to raise this exhaust rod back up to the exhaust hanger and just kind of work it back into place just like that. You can see with the bouncing around, it doesn't touch the hitch or rattle against the hitch. We're just working in reverse here, getting the fender lining back into place here with the three screws and the three plastic fasteners. And that's it. Let's take a look at uh, how this hitch turned out. You can see that the cross tube is well hidden behind the bumper fascia here. The only thing that you can see is the inch and a quarter receiver tube portion and the tow hooks here um, or safety chain hooks. Um, one other feature is the half inch attachment hole here for your it, it's for pinning clips or um, any locking device for any hitch accessory that you put in here like a ball mount or cargo carrier or bike rack okay and then we have uh, the hitch weight ratings are on a sticker here let's wipe it off so we can see it a little bit better We've got 2,000 pounds max gross trailer weight and 200 pounds gross tongue weight um, tongue weight is what's being put in this area right here and that, that'll do it for this uh, Kia Soul. So thank you for watching. Once installed, this hitch will measure 11 inches from the inside of the receiver to the ground, 5 and a quarter inches from the pinhole to the end of the bumper, and 3 and a quarter inches from the end of the receiver to the bumper. To learn more about the products seen in this video or to schedule an installation by U-Haul Hitch Professional, visit us online today at uhaulhitches.com.